So I'm now absolutely delighted to introduce our first speaker, Her Royal Highness the Countess of Wessex. Her Royal Highness has been an extraordinarily committed supporter for the cause of eye health for many years, both as our global ambassador, but also as vice patron of the Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Trust, where she came to know well many eye health programmes across the Commonwealth, many of which are described in the report. So Your Royal Highness. Thank you very much, Peter. And it's wonderful to be with all of you today. Three years ago, the Commonwealth Heads of Government made a landmark commitment to eye health. In making this commitment to take firm action towards achieving access to quality eye care for all, the lives of millions of people across the Commonwealth have been transformed. The next travel meeting that takes place will be an opportunity for ministers to look back over the last two years and also agree the next steps. What will be evident through the reports presented is that huge steps have been taken to address many of the avoidable and treatable eye conditions that have blighted the lives and opportunities of so many. During my time as Vice Patron of the Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Trust, I had the pleasure of traveling to a number of Commonwealth countries to witness for myself the work being carried out by governments, agencies, and everyone coming together. In Malawi, I met children learning about the importance of clean hands and clean faces to help them fend off blinding trachoma. In Bangladesh, I attended a meeting of rural women being educated about the dangers of diabetes. And in India, I saw tiny babies being screened for retinopathy of prematurity. The effects of education about health issues, access to early intervention, and the availability of effective treatments have all combined to drastically reduce the numbers of people needlessly losing their sight. Each of these experiences and the countless others that I have had during my work with avoidable blindness for more than 20 years now have proven to me time and time again that when individuals, agencies, companies and governments all work together, the outcomes are profound and life-changing. Only last month I was thrilled to speak with the Health Minister of the Government of the Gambia and celebrate with them as they announced the elimination of blinding trachoma. Only the second country in Sub-Saharan Africa after Ghana to have reached this milestone. But so many other countries have also made incredible and positive strides forward to improving the eye health of their communities too. What is clear is that this is very much about a team effort. It has to start at the top with government commitment. But then it is down to the many incredible individuals who work within the eye care health system to deliver. And given the support, deliver they do. From the local eye health teams to the agencies and NGOs, from the amazingly creative research technician whose technology is being used worldwide, to the ophthalmologists and nurses treating patients in hospitals. Every one of them are playing their part in ensuring that the child whose life might otherwise have been one of no horizon is now one with endless horizons. The woman who's never seen her grandchild can now help her daughter to look after her. And the man who has had to stop work and cannot feed his family can now rebuild his life and offer his family a future. What is also clear is that as the world changes and populations increase, the issue of poor eyesight is set to grow and will continue to require attention and commitment in the years to come. And in order to be effectively tackled, it will need to remain high up the health agendas of all governments. My hope is not to have to persuade you that this is the right thing to do, but that the proof of effectiveness is here for all to see, that the ability to change life chances for all are within our grasp, and that this important area of health remains a key priority for Commonwealth governments now and in the future. While I understand all too well that healthcare has been under enormous pressure these past months and that the COVID-19 pandemic has inflicted huge pain and loss everywhere, I am also heartened to see how much has been achieved in eye health in every region of the Commonwealth in the last three years. So my thanks go to the Commonwealth governments and their communities for the continued commitment to this important issue and for choosing the gift of sight as a key priority. And please be in no doubt that I will continue to follow all of your progresses closely. Thank you, Peter. Royal Highness, thank you very much indeed. And thank you for your support, um, which I know has been inspirational for, for us. 
uh, and I very much echo your thanks to governments across the Commonwealth for, for their commitment to eye health.